Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be looking at very dangerous but very unique types of leg locks. We're going to be revisiting the Danzan Ryu Jiu Jitsu footage to look at them. Now, these aren't your classical leg locks that we've seen transition into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu of today, but they are somewhat unique. But personally, I don't know why they are not being used today in competition unless they are but if they are i would say they're very rarely used but nonetheless they're still pretty much uh, effective so the footage or that i used will be in the description uh, below you can follow the channel as well so like i said um, they're gonna be very much competition oriented but unique uh, as well so the first one here you see it's an inner reap followed by a classical straight uh, ankle lock. Now, this one is being used, obviously, but there is a pattern that I've noticed in old uh, jiu-jitsu and judo when it comes to this straight foot lock is that it's always done on the inside. Now, here you see the ko uchigari, which is the minor inner reap, and from it you actually use your foot or the reaping foot to actually uh, feed the leg into your hand before attacking it. So this is a great technique, great for jujitsu and in judo it's a very sneaky one, great to score ippon and at the same time great for self-defense. All around great technique wherever you want to take it on the streets, on the mats or another discipline. So now let's take a look at a few references for straight ankle lock. Uh, this one here is from Kawaishi's book uh, you see here the uh, single leg X type uh, hold and he stretches his leg on the far uh, hip in order to lock it. Notice how it's on the inside and he takes it back like the arrow is pointing. This one here is from Yukio Tani's book. It's like a shallow 50-50 type uh, foot placement but you see it's locking the hip uh, on the inside and notice it's on the inside that's been that the leg is uh, grabbed not on the uh, outside here uh, as he's just putting his legs on his hips but notice that the leg is not on the outside but going in the inside which leverages the lock further and attacking the calf muscle or the Achilles heel uh, or yes so now here, this one is very unique. It's like an ude hishigi, uh, ude gatame, but it's on the knee. So you rest the Achilles heel on your shoulder or the uh, upper lower part of the calf muscle on your shoulder and you put your palms on the knees, which locks it, and then you apply pressure on the knee. Uh, it, might, it might not be the strongest compared to something like a knee bar, but it is still very much effective and in self-defense there is always that option of you just getting up and running away. This one is interesting. It's not the most effective, but it is still uh, it can still do some damage. So uh, this is what we call today a knee pick or in judo terminology kuchiki taoshi. So you grab the leg from the inside and you see the leg that you attacked is the leg that you lock so you press on the knee and you press on the toes downwards so it creates like a straight foot lock but with your hands rather than you know wrapping it with your legs and putting it in the armpit this one is very interesting it can be a counter to an ashigarami but um, you can just uh, put your foot to the outside and then press on the uh, ankle downwards which heavily targets the knee here you see Mifune doing it as a counter to an Ashigarami I posted a video on the buggy choke and there was this one guy that's trying to press his own knee in this way and ended up just snapping his own knee it was brutal so I would imagine this is a very dangerous technique now here you see a calf crush being done it can be done with your own leg or here it can be done with the partner's leg and uh, just apply an immense amount of pressure on the calf muscle. Here is the same one that we've seen earlier as the knee attack. Um, 
So as you can see, uh, there are some that we use a lot today in jujitsu, but some like, for example, the knee bar that you do with your hands and you put it on your shoulder and you press the knee with your hands. Now, I understand it's not as powerful as a knee bar and simply because your hips will always be much stronger than your hands in order to do the damage. And it's not uh, a hand that you are trying to attack like an elbow, but rather an entire leg. So a leg will always be much stronger than your hands. So I understand why they don't use it as much today, but nonetheless, it is a good option to be, for example, if you're climbing up from half guard and then there's the free leg that you can attack, there's just so many ways that you can do it. Or when someone's trying to entangle your legs, you can grab the heel or the uh, ankle and push it down much like Mifune did and you can target the knee. Uh, I don't know if it's been done or the first one like the Ude Gatame has been done. Uh, if, the, it's, if it has been done, please uh, let me know uh, down below. I would really uh, appreciate it. So Danzan Ryu, it's a very interesting school in my opinion. There's just so much that goes into it. They really target the not only the techniques, such as the grappling techniques, self-defense techniques, but also they uh, really go into resuscitation techniques and also uh, healing techniques, such as putting the elbow back in its place or the kuatsu techniques. So uh, I've recently seen a Kodokan uh, seminar that actually was uh, doing these techniques, these resuscitation techniques. It seems that in the past, they were quite fond of them. Today, obviously not because medical assistance is far more uh, important. Now we still do it without us knowing. For example, if someone is choked out, we do lift their legs up. So we have that rush of blood to the head so they can uh, wake up uh, again. Also, you know, verbally tapping and tapping. And also you should be very responsible with your partner if you are much more uh, advanced you should know that um, you have the choke deep or the lock deep and maybe they don't know it, maybe they don't feel it, but you yourself should know. Uh, and that's your responsibility as someone who is advanced. So uh, if you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. Also consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive content. I post there about once a week and also your support would mean greatly to keep this content evolving and growing. This was Shadi and as always, thank you for listening.